That's, that favors your style, though. You're explosive, quick. So it's like it's like I've set this up for years, you know, because I've talked to me in practice. I'll be like, I'll kill anybody in a minute or two. Like, no one will <laughs> stop me. And then, so it's like, okay, now I'm going in and getting two minutes to go. Yeah, yeah. Vaughn into the windup in his first offering. Just a bit outside. Matt, are you recording? Yes, sir. Just a bit outside. We got a legend in the house today, uh, Brandon Gertz. What's up, bro? What's up, my man? We Washington Park cornhole fucking <laughs> champion. I've never been beat up more in my life. Same. <laughs> Bottle of whiskey, 40 beers later. Uh, hand and out fitness. <laughs> Brandon went four and one. And I did 200 push-ups. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking was sore the next day. I was too. It felt good. I was you like, we're going to work out in. and Like I said, handing out fitness, man. You know, I'm all about that healthy life, guys. <laughs> Dishing it out. What were you going to say? You get some fitness. And you, uh, it's fight week, bare knuckle. Uh, big fights this week in Denver coming up at the First Bank Center. We got Brandon Gertz on the card, hometown hero. We got the legend Chris Camozzi on the card as well. Yeah. Um, if you don't have tickets, these guys have links. Uh, we'll post those in the show notes or in the Instagram feed. Both. Uh, on YouTube as well. Buy some tickets. Um, and there's still tickets available, guys? Yeah, there's tickets. And then we have a stream link, too. Um, so, like, if people want to get on the app and watch it, you can watch it from anywhere on your phone, whatever. Um, but if you're in Denver, show the fuck up. Yeah, we're going to huh? party after. Let's represent. Um, we're getting a limo. Are you? Yeah, well, let's go hard. I'm not going to drink. I'll babysit. Hey, I mean, you don't have to talk to me. I got to be there at four, so <laughs> um, <laughs> I won't be in there with you. So, guys, when did the fights actually start? Could you give us some logistical information? They start at six? The undercard starts at six. <laughs> <laughs> undercard at six? Undercard at six. Uh, main card at seven, I think. And then it's, it's your fight... Brandon's fight main event uh, near the end. Yeah, there's a there's a bunch of fights before us. So we got a teammate Josh Copeland who fights before me. Cuddly Bear on yeah. Instagram. Yes, I think sir. you sparred with him, right? I did spar with Cuddly Bear. Dude. I wasn't really sparring. I was like trying not to throw up. <laughs> Let me tell you, he might. I came and sparred Gertz, and I was so out of shape, and uh, everyone was just teeing off on me. <laughs> and I was just trying not to pass out. Grant was just talking shit to you, hitting you yeah, in the stomach all the way across the mat. He told me. He told trying me. to <laughs> split my liver in half. There, Josh, Cuddly Bear might fucking kill somebody. Yeah. That dude hits so hard and, and just bombs over hands, but like not in a wild way either. That dude can just put him mm. right on your chin. No, he's got accuracy with those things. It's is he athletic? Is he got? Does he move? Yeah. Yes. Does he? Yes. He's quick on his feet. So logistics: six p.m. doors open. You can stream it again. Maddie will put a link for both. Uh, but buy tickets and let's support these guys. I know we have two tables, so. If you do hear this before the fight comes out, come say hi to the Fit Soda crew. Yeah, you guys, I think, are right next to the walkout ramp, too. So we'll be high-fiving as we come down. I'm going to be in that fucking everyone's head hard. <laughs> <laughs> You're about yes. to get fucked Sorry. up. Yes, Chris yes. looks like a fighter See who's you not after fighting. the fight, fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, watch out. Um, Somebody might jump off that ramp. So, Brandon, how do you feel this week, man? I know uh, being at Genesis, you guys train really fucking hard. You, you feeling good? You feeling confident? You feeling... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The fight fight week's always weird, man. It's just a weird week. It's, you know, I'm fucking edgy as hell, you know, yeah. right? Now, and I can't help it, you know? It's like every... Edgy like an anxious edgy? Uh, just I just want to kill a motherfucker right now. And, yeah. And that's all that's going through my head, and I'm just... And I can't turn it off, you know? It's just like, my girl says one thing, I'm just like, I'm so short, and I'm so... It's like, mm. don't talk to me like that. I'm like... Sorry, babe. Like it's like, dude. It's like, yeah. I can't turn it down right now because all I'm thinking about is war. So that's what's just going through my head the whole time. It's like, like Vichy will step in front of me. You know, I love my dog. It's like, get the fuck out of the way. I'm just like, I can't. Like right now during fight week, usually we're at a hotel. Like I'm, I haven't fought in a hometown since I started fighting. Do you, you guys know? prefer? This might be a stupid fucking question, but do you per, you would you rather fight away because there's less distraction, or do you like being at home? it's hard to say right now. This is the first time I've done it in like 10 years. Like wow. I haven't been, so I'm usually in a hotel. I'm usually walking through that thing, fucking looking everybody in the eyes. Like I want to kill everybody <laughs> I'm seeing. And that's all I'm doing while I'm there. That's in right now. I got, I'm going home, I'm going home to my family and people I love. And I'm trying to like keep that down. But at the same time, I'm like, I'm not trying to 
dull my edges, you know. So yeah. it's it's a it's a weird thing. My girl's gonna go stay at her parents for a couple nights just so we don't <laughs> like. I got it. I got it. You know, I don't want to be putting that on her. You. Did know? you ever see that Cat Williams special when he talks about meeting DMX? Yeah. Why hey yo, you bitch. Let me. Is that you at restaurants? <laughs> hey yo, bitch. He's like, what's the answer? Let me get some water with some lemon. <laughs> what's the answer to number seven? <laughs> He's so like, do you, do you do you find like uh, is there any way to tone that down? Do you like meditate or try to manage it at all, or do you just fucking let that crazy energy? <laughs> See, I want that energy out, mm. you know. Especially this one's even different than before. It, it's might have uh, I don't want to say cost me fights before, but I go in there with that same energy, and then he brings on a game plan, you know, with a different type of energy. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, but this one I know it's like this is a little bit more in your face. Like you can't run, you can't. You can't keep, it's not the same as MMA, you know? So I feel like I got to go in there with the same energy, like you killed my family, which I usually always go in, but this one's really going to be like that type of energy, you know? And I'm, yeah. I want- Because I, of the bare knuckle, bare knuckle component? It's the bare knuckle component. It's, you can't really, I don't feel like you can keep the same distance and run like you can. And I'm not saying people do that in fighting, but they do with kicks and mm. this and that and the movement that you're able to keep. And takedowns and everything and just, else. Like a lot of things can slow it down. This is just kind of, this is more brawling. We were talking about like, Gertz had a good point. He's like, most of the good like boxers, um, cause there's been some legit boxers that have come over to try mm -hmm. bare knuckle and they get fucked up really because it's just the pace is different. It's more of like, it's, it's not clean and pretty like boxing, you know, boxing's the, they call it the sweet science. Mm -hmm. This is more like, it's we're going to physical gonna in brawl. your face. It's more physical science. in your face. Yeah. We were drinking <laughs> old crow science. at the it's bar and now we're stuck in this place you, you, and we're going to brawl in every bar fights a minute. You know, yeah. and that's, these are short periods for a reason. They want you to go in there and they want you to explode. It's like people get up, get put away quick, get cut quick, you know, and that's, that favors your style though. You're explosive quick. So it's like, it's like, I've set this up for years, you know, cause I've talked to me in practice. I'll be like, I'll kill anybody in a minute or two. Like no one will <laughs> stop me. And then, so it's like, okay, now I'm going in and getting two minutes to go. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, I've, we've talked, I've talked about this years and years ago. It's like, I like to start quick. I like to go in there. I like to be in the face the whole time and not let you breathe. And this is kind of perfect for me. Yeah, that's dope. We got a Gertz highlight reel loaded up here. Let's see it. Standing very tall, as you're seeing there, is wide open for the takedown. Gertz, to your point on the Anderson fight. Oh, to be hard shot. Not cautious here. Gertz looking for the rapid fire finish. And he gets it. Al Gaini has seen it. Look at the rose, bro. Well, see, this will be the first time I got rose again. <laughs> hey, first time I had rose knockout. I can't see it there, but. Right here, just a that next one just clipped him. Right on the front of the mouth, knocked him off balance. Didn't necessarily connect with the jaw itself. Madrid taking punishment. Hands. Oh. <laughs> that was nasty. That's kind of like this: no going backwards. No going backwards. If I go backwards, that would be insane. Look at that short hair. Yeah, who's that guy? <laughs> right, I see pictures. You look like you're going that. to a job interview. I'm like, who was that guy? Oh. She's so right on top of him. I love it. Just handing out fitness. Handing out brain damage. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm pumped. So you're fighting Jake Lindsay, right? Is that his name? Yes. Yeah. yeah I still got to look him up. What's What's this guy's background? Is he MMA too? Yeah, he was yeah. in the UFC, right? Yeah, he's in the UFC. He, I think he was in Bellator a little bit too. He looks um, like a fucking librarian, if I remember correctly. It, well, I think you read his name, Dave, because I think his nickname was librarian or something. Wow. Oh, really? No, it, it wasn't. It, yeah, shut up. I think you might, did it. I did. No, I was like, this guy, first of all. You just came up with that? Gypsy. Yeah. He changed his name, though. I saw it. It was the librarian. He changed his nickname. Miller comes up with stuff like that a lot of times. He'll be like, that guy looks like a third grade math teacher. One of my favorite things to do is like when, when I'm out is judge people. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I'll be like, that guy... It happened a few weeks ago. We were at the church show and I was like, that guy's a that guy's an environmental engineer for an oil company. And then I saw him at an oil conference that afternoon. Uh, yeah, this Lindsay dude looks like a librarian. He looks like a third grade geography teacher. Yeah, yeah. And you look like you're from the fucking West Virginia Appalachian Mountains. Like you <laughs> you moonshine and fought your whole way through fucking like you're gonna murk this. This is the dude. librarian. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. 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 Where's yep, he's Lindsay. from uh what is it, like Arkansas? Jake's or the pediatrician I Lindsay. <sighs> I think Kane's, I don't know. Drew Dober trained with him. I think he's from like Nebraska or something like Kansas that area. Or, oh, I think you said Kansas. Look, at, Kansas. it is the librarian. That's what I said. That's he so has wow. the librarian on Damn, there. dude. I'm That's fucking a, undefeated in the yeah. streets. Should we just click? <laughs> Do you want to like 
hover over someone and guess their nickname will go <laughs> mm. I'm Who shocked Chris isn't here? pretty boy Kamozi. None. Nick. Uh, nickname is none, dude. Nickname yeah. none. Me too. Like that. Chris, so do you Kamozi. so do you both of you guys is um so I got to see some, can of your, beat none. some of your training with coach. Is the training a lot different for this versus an MMA event? Or is yeah. it is it kind of the same? I mean, it's like we were saying, different pace. So when we hit mitts, it's like a lot busier, a lot more like volume, power. It's just hands. So we have plenty of time to like train. And, you know, we were talking about it before, and I think I said it on here before. It's with MMA, it feels like there's not enough hours in the day. You got to, you got to wrestle, you got to do jujitsu, you got to do striking, then you got to drill, then you got to spar. You got know, to do strength and conditioning. You're like, and then how you the fuck rest. do I do all you of that? You got to rest yeah. in between that a little bit. You're not resting <laughs> enough. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, I think there's an argument. I've been telling him for years. I think there's this argument to be made. You guys should train less. Do you know what I mean? Like work on skills. Do you know what I mean? But like the hardcore pushing it all the time. I almost feel like it's detrimental in a way. So, so I will agree and disagree with that. I agree at when you first start and you're young, you're young. Think about our bodies when we're young. We can take so much. Sure. Like when we were in our low 20s, 18, low 20s, our bodies can take so much and we keep pushing. That's when I call it the build your foundation time, especially mm. in roots. The sports. Build those roots. Make them strong. Make them, you know, everything like that. Those are those times, because I would train eight hours a day. In my training sessions, I'd be in rolling for three hours, just rolling, rolling. Right. And I could get up. Freaking did drink, go home, and I wasn't fucking sore, yeah. you know. And yeah. I fucking and I wasn't recovering like I do now. All that testosterone, it, it, it's just, it's just flowing through your body, you know. And I get back, wake up the next day, do it again, and not be like, oh, I hurt. It, I wouldn't be hurting. So back then, you can train like that. So build your roots, build your foundation, is what I call it. But once you start getting older and you've done it for a while, that foundation is built. Now you train smarter. Now you recover more. Now you train differently. If you're training the same way you did when you first started, you're an idiot, which some people do. Yeah. And they're like, oh, what are you Some coaches wait? push that too, right? They push that or you, you know, and I love it. And you got the teammates that are like, oh, why aren't you here? Why aren't you here? It's like, bro, I can't do that now. Like, it, I was there. I've, I'm fucking, I'm 15, I, well, I'm high competition 20 some years, you know? Fuck. And it's just like, yeah. I can't fucking push my body and do those things. I already built that. I, I was at every practice. I was there every day. I was there on Monday after fucking I fought on Saturday, you know? And I was building my roots. But now I built those roots. I don't need to train like that anymore if I want to keep doing this because otherwise your body will give. And I already got all that that built, you know. It's I got that knowledge. My body's been through it. It's been calloused, you know. Now you got to train smarter, you know. Mm. And like, especially this sport has been able to even let me do that more too, because I don't have to. I don't have to grapple. I don't have to do those things that mm. fucking Those are about bare knuckle. Yes, yeah. yes. Being bare knuckle, it's just the hands. I'm able to focus more on that. I'm able to focus more on my body conditioning, aka doing strength and conditioning better, not to just beat my body up you mm. know like that's yeah and I, that's what i feel like once you get older you gotta train smarter and differently than you used to every year you should start training a little bit differently yeah yeah we were talking once about how i mean brady doesn't go to otas neither does neither does aaron Rodgers. i mean i'm the ceo of a company there's going to be a time when i work less than everyone else because i paid my dues i earned it um, yeah built the foundation <laughs> and you're that's and we're trying point. to yeah we're trying to save our bodies too like now i mean how many fights have you had in uh professionally yeah. in, in the <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, either way uh, you know total in, lifetime in, in, in lifetime 205 yeah <laughs> <laughs> professional my Ten, weight maybe yeah. <laughs> but no i mean like yeah i think i'm i'm in like mid 40s or 50 or something i don't even know but you I, don't look a day over 30 pal <laughs> you do great but i mean by this time yeah every day <laughs> uh by this time we know how to fight right you're like, so 40 that 40 pro fights Somewhere in there. I think yeah. I've got more than that. Um, wow. But, like, we know how to fight now. So, like, my body knows what it's like. My brain knows what it's like to be in there. I know the feeling. So it's more about, like, staying sharp, getting your reactions, all of that stuff on point than it is me just going and brawling with everybody at the gym. Again, like, I used to do that, too. We used to kick each other through the drywall and fucking smash windows and stuff. Like, the gym was destroyed. It was this tiny gym. And, like, those were the days that I was, like, learning. So it was good because that intensity was like a fight. So it was the experience and the exhaustion and somebody's just beating the fuck out of you and people were getting knocked out. I think there's a time and a place for it. But like he said, as you get further in your career and like you were saying, you take a step back and you train smarter, not fucking harder. 
Exactly. Yeah. Smarter, not harder. So what do you guys do on a week like this? I'm really curious about recovery. So I know c- camp coming into last Friday, sparring. Is this week you guys are just in the gym hitting mitts and kind of keeping loose? Sparring how, how does, how does <laughs> I would, It wouldn't shock me. I told somebody that over the weekend. I can't man. fight. I got, I got my orbital bone broken in practice. That wouldn't shock me. <laughs> Who was it? Uh, no, we, we tone it way down, just mitts and stuff moving. You remember um, Ken Shamrock was supposed to fight Kimbo, I think it was, and he got cut the day of the fight. And they were like, how the fuck did you get cut? And he was like, sparring. Sparring. And then he was like, anybody that says they don't spar the day of the fight is a fucking liar. Do you spar the day of the fight? <laughs> no. Yeah. That sounds aggressive. Yeah. That's like playing a football game and then playing a football game. Yeah. Yeah. It feels counterproductive. Doing hitting drills before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oklahoma's. Yeah. yeah. But he was a different, you know. Yeah. <laughs> He's still a little different. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, no, this week has just been like, I'm going to hit mitts after this. It's pretty light. It's not even hard, like exhausting mm-hmm. anything. It's more just movement. Same thing. Jake throws stuff at me, have me move my head, react. More of a warm up, more of a, this week's more of a mental, you know, it's mm. creating the things, going through the steps, going through what you're going to do for me personally, you know, and then just keeping my legs, you know, I'm not going to just sit on a couch and not, you still want the body. My body is used to moving. It's used to working out. I'm not just going to stop, mm-hmm. you know, like nothing I'm doing right now is going to make me more prepared, like physically for the fight. Like I'm not going to get in any more shape this week, mm. you know, nothing like that. So I'm not pushing that level, but I'm keeping the motor going you know because you can't you can't stop it our bodies are used to moving you know Mm. so we have to do little workouts here and there but everything is no real no intensity right now you know like i'll go on bike bike rides which is what i do but i turn it down a little bit you know Mm. and and it's just about keeping it moving and sharpening you know mentally right now i watch i watch this is like i was about to ask that how do you guys both stay sharp mentally because like when i played football and rugby, I would do psycho shit, like keep pictures of the guys I wanted to fucking murder. Mm-hmm. And I would just sit there and be like, I'm going to fucking kill you. <laughs> and I, and do, do you do shit like that? Is there this, my pictures on your fridge, bro? Yeah. So this is like when I start, like I'm not a game, like I do game plan for the fighter. And of course, I've watched like one of his fights before, before, like I accepted the fight before I even knew I was fighting. I was like, yeah, mm. give me whoever the fuck you guys want me to fight. And then I watched one fight just to see what he did. You know, and that was it. And now this week, I'll watch more of his fights, not to learn what he does, but to see his fucking face, to watch what he does and be like, you fucking suck. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going to kill you. (laughs) Yeah. And that's what I watch it now. I'm just like, like, I just watched it yesterday, right before cardio, you know, like I freaking watch him this week so I can imprint his face in my mind what I'm going to be punching. Now I'm imagining hitting it. You know, shit like that right now. And imagining that I freaking hate this guy to death. Do you guys do any like, yeah, no, dude, if I were a fighter and still in a competitive sport, I would have like priests come in from every, every denomination and like hex this guy. <laughs> I would fucking, I would do all kinds of weird shit. Um, Where were you at with that idea? We could have made a funny ass video of that. You could have hired a bunch of people, people to come yeah. in and I would have been like, yeah, get him. <laughs> every religion, every Reverse denomination, exorcist. Satanist, <laughs> Christians, <laughs> black magic folk, I'd have them all in here just hexing a doll just that I had sure. made. Just fucking all the bad juju. You know what's funny is before, but then we bless him after. You know, it's all good after. Oh, after. (laughs) What's funny is like Gertz and I didn't even talk about this, but I do the same thing. Like fight week, like then I'll watch more of his videos. I don't, I don't really pay attention to my opponent's stuff, but I do the same thing. I go back and watch his fights, and I'm like, all right, if you hit me with that, I'm gonna fucking crush your face. Like, yeah, yeah. You get in like your mindset, like, okay, all right, like. I see it, I see it, I see it, yeah. and then I get all worked up. And do you guys do any, run. like, uh, visualization stuff? Like, I know probably as you're, like, doing cardio, you're, you're picturing it. Do you do anything where you're in a quiet place, eyes closed, visualizing? Is that part of the process? I do. You do? I'm doing it today. Yeah? I got it scheduled. <laughs> I would. Uh, just like I said, I, I got his face in my mind, and I'm, I'm imagining freaking throwing, throwing my hooks at his head, freaking imagining taking his head off. You know, like I said, I like, I watch him this week because I like to see his face. Like, I got that face fucking imprinted in my head right now. I got a smug on my face. I got a thought <laughs> in my head that he can fucking beat me. You know, I got a thought in my head that he can fucking take my fucking family. You mm-hmm. know, fucking, if this was a village, he's coming to fucking take my fucking, my fucking beautiful child because he's going to be a fucking warrior. So he thinks he can come and take this guy and fucking make him his own. And it's the librarian. This is not fucking happening. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking I pic- awesome. I picture Gertz like, you remember you went medieval right there. I picture Gertz like when Rocky fought Drago. 
because you got your land out there. He's, he's out there picking like, up logs and yeah, shit. Yeah, he's like lifting <laughs> logs and like cutting wood, <laughs> thinking about it. Chopping wood super aggressively. Yeah. <laughs> what the wood do to you, man? <laughs> What's the day of the fight look like? Honestly, boring. <sighs> Most, a lot yeah. of sitting around. I watch you know? movies and stuff. Sometimes I watch movies that are like, yeah, like action movies and stuff. Like and the minions. Get a little hyped. Do you try to keep your mind off of it that day? I don't usually think about it too much the day of. I don't even think about the fight a lot of times till I start warming up. Because, mm. like, I think what we do, like, the day of, what we do is serious enough and, like, it's tense. And I like my corner guys to, like, kind of have a good time, like, fuck around. But then it's a switch, right? Like, as soon as, I mean, I'm not putting gloves on this time. But usually once I, like, glove up, I'm like. You're still wrapped the for moves. these, right? Uh, wrists, yeah. Okay. You, what did they say? It's got to be two fingers from your knuckles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, just pretty much from the thumb down so yeah two inches i think that you said yeah. i'm a little different in that like i'm not joking around at all yeah like when i'm there i'm fucking serious like i said when i'm there i'm literally looking at everybody like you're you could be next motherfucker you could be next <laughs> like because i'm mugging people I, in the locker room and, shit. And, and i'm trying to i'm not trying to overexert my energy like i'm not out there screaming i'm not out there not fucking but i'm inside right now i'm ready to fucking explode you know and that's yeah. kind of i can't like I said, this whole week, that's what I'm like. Like, right now, I'm sitting in here. I've been switching my fucking fist the whole fucking time because we're talking about this motherfucker. I want to fucking kill. I'm starting to sweat. You know, like, <laughs> I, I'm just like, I fucking dude. love that. Yeah. So it's like, I fucking love it. This week's about, you know, my whole life is usually about keeping my fucking savage down. Like, don't be a fucking. My whole life has been that because I've always been that kid. Where are you from, like, Brennan? Uh, Minnesota. Minnesota. Yeah. Did you grow up tough? I mean, I, I, dude, I was a short kid, you know, like, so I literally had to prove to everybody I could kick their fucking ass. Yeah. So literally my whole life was about fucking <laughs> ready to fucking go all the time because I, I had a little fucking chip on my shoulder. Cause you know, like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm not a tall man. Did so you have what, brothers? No brothers. No brothers. You know, no brothers. Do you remember uh, your first fight ever? Uh, I do. And I, I was fucking like, my sister's three or four years older than me and we were on the playground and somebody was like bullying her and I remember blasting across and fucking just shove I'll call that my first fight because I'm like fucking who knows like eight or six you know <laughs> I just remember fucking blasting that person over remind you it was a fucking girl <laughs> <laughs> <Whooped her ass. laughs> but, <laughs> but I mean, you know I came and knocked her ass on the ground she was three four years old hey, yeah. you, you that know? counts bro you know, girls are counts. so much bigger than guys you when know, we're young you could have saved face and left that that detail you know, out, you know, <laughs> you know, I, no shame, bro. I'll put whoever out of the way that's fucking with my sister, you know. So I'll count that as one of my first fights. Do you, do you do you do you remember that moment well? Like, were you like so? Like, I know where my rage came from as a kid. So I was the youngest kid. I got picked on by all my brothers, like beat up. Mm -hmm. um, I was a porky little kid, so I got <laughs> made fun of constantly. But because of my size, I was always, you know, like when. In Pop Warner, I played with ninth high school kids because I was too big for, mm -hmm. and they just kicked the fucking shit out of me. So a lot of my life became defending myself against people. And I kind of remember the rage starting early, like in junior high, where I was like, this is fucking, I'm, I'm done with this. Do you, did you have st stuff happen to you early in life where you always felt kind of pent up? Like, I just think I was a crazy kid, you know, like I, I was always trying to seek the, the, the stuff that would fucking you could get hurt, you know, climbing trees, driving dirt bikes, doing shit that I was always on that. The only thing, like I said, I could be, remember being called short and shit would just fuck. The one word that would give me was midget. And I don't know. And like that one would fucking just make me fight. Like I was kicked out of school constantly. You know, like I always go back sixth grade. You know how sixth grade is? You get to go on so many cool food, field trips. I got to go on one field trip and that was because my mom was the chaperone and I was able to go on one and it was one of the <laughs> lame ones at like an opera house. Yeah. Other than that, I didn't get to go on any of the camp overs. I didn't get to go to fucking anything because I literally lived in the principal's office because there was a fight after a fight after a fight or just fucking just not listening to anybody because I thought no one could tell me shit, you know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it, I lived that life from there and then I did it in junior high and I remember going into high school and my mom telling me, you, you get to start over again, you know, like, cause you don't want to like be known as that kid still and you get to start over. And I think at about 10th grade, cause that's when sports kind of got a little more serious. And then if you get kicked out, you're fucking suspended off the sports. Mm -hmm. So I think that's when I finally was like, 
it was the, you know, because I would go to shit, count to 10, you know, something happens, count to 10, because I would just react, punch somebody, fucking say something, punch them. Yeah. Fucking, so I had, about 10th grade is when it started to come down a little bit, and I started to be like, all right, I got to put this fucking little crazy man in a fucking box, which is kind of hard, you know, <laughs> yeah. but, but that's when, like, society, and I learned, like, if you want to do things in life, you got to fucking put that guy down a little bit, like, you know, you won't play sports if you fucking get in more trouble now, you know, like, and that's when I started to like, now I you get to like, let him out. Exactly. <laughs> and that over the years was hard to like learn again, like letting them out. Cause it was like one of those sins my whole life. I've worked on keeping that rage down. Count to 10. Don't do that. You know, like you're a fucking weirdo, like fucking put that <laughs> shit down. Like, you know, so it was always fighting was one of those weirder things that took me a while to try to like learn to let to to control it and let it go you know and um it's been a good thing controlling that because I, I i guarantee i would be somewhere not fucking here in a fucking box caged up if i if i wasn't able to learn to do that a little better yeah well we're glad you're here bro what sports <laughs> did you play were you wrestling so I didn't wrestle until 10th grade. I did everything else, football, baseball, fucking. Dude, his story um, with wrestling is pretty impressive, I, if, if I could say it. Like, yeah. So he, not shitting on you, I read this a while back about you. That, <laughs> no like, fights in the office. That you, didn't, like, <laughs> that you didn't really have like the best high school wrestling career, right? No, no, no. But then you went to college, and he walked on, was it Minnesota State? Yeah, yeah. He walked on, but then you became an All-American. Yeah, which yeah. Which is fucking nuts, like. So you just walked on and then at Minnesota State. So I didn't start wrestling until tenth grade. Yeah, that's, that's late. That's too. when I started wrestling, and I didn't really get a hold of it until fucking you know twelfth grade. And then uh, went to call, walked on, and then you know I, I ended up starting my first year because I had to do wrestle offs and because um, the starter got hurt, and then we had to do so. This is freshman year. Fucking college, you usually red shirt your freshman year. And wrestle offs, if you don't know, is like. It'll be him and the other guys, like, they battle basically in the gym to see who's the starter. So they yeah. make you compete in the gym, and they, like, score it and everything, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's just like having a wrestling match, but all the teammates around behind closed circle, doors. behind closed doors, and the starter ended up getting hurt. So now oh, there's a wrestle-off about halfway through the season, and I ended up doing the wrestle-off, and I fucking broke the the guy that would have started, a senior, would have started. I ended up, I broke his fucking collarbone wrestling, fucking picked him down, fucking dropped him. I broke his collarbone. So now there went my fucking freshman year, and now I have to start. You know, I still <laughs> yeah. fucking, I didn't fucking. Victim you of know? your own success. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, oh, you know, and it was like one of those things I wasn't ready for. It. College is such a fucking crazy place at first, you know. It's yeah. like trying to do a sport and be your first year of college is fucking nuts. It's like, dude, I, I barely made it through school. It was either, either, I mean, I made it through school, not freshman year though. It was literally like all D's. It was literally go work out or go to class. Like it was like, yeah. so I was choosing work out, you know? And then, well, then you have girls and booze and parties and all that other stuff too. And, and I, I'm good at that. I've never been a big drinker. So that it was more fucking halo and fucking <laughs> shit like that. Bro. It was more staying up. When the new halo shit. came out in college, it ruined like a year of my when life. You could, you could play people at other fucking places or it first started, you could play them in the other dorm rooms. And then Bro. all of a sudden it connected where you could play another call that was that was the first how obviously we can play people all over the world now but that's where it started and only colleges had it at first yeah if you, you, remember, could their, like, you could use their network yeah. the network and it was just colleges and shit dude halo was bro i was so competitive it. at halo i would stay up at night and i figured out that you could practice on them so i started in quake like despite my big dumb appearance i was a computer nerd in high school took all the c plus <laughs> plus classes was friends with all those guys we would play Quake on the land system yeah, in, in class. High school, and I then, set it up. So I was already good at first person shooters. So, anyways, mm -hmm. when I got into Halo, I figured out you could run the maps, but in your head, you could count things down. Oh. So, like, I would learn to monopolize weapons. So, I would grab a weapon and sit there and go 1001, 1002. So, I would learn, I would memorize maps and where the weapons were. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I would be counting in my head as I was murking dudes. I'd pick up the grenade launcher and then be like a thousand one, a thousand two, and I'd already be making my way back yeah, around the map. Yeah, you just make the circle because then they'd be boom. <laughs> yeah. Dude, it was I, my favorite was shotguns. Obsessed. My favorite was shotguns, but I would get through there if I got killed. It would be crazy. Like I'd thirty zero every. I would. Yeah. I was fucking so because I got reaction speed, that, which yeah. is what video games. Why I believe. Okay, it's yo, important. Shit. I know yo, this. Yo, I know yo. this <laughs> argument. Get I know this yo. argument. I, I gotta I, go. I, I know this <laughs> argument. You've seen, you've seen us I, talk I, about I've this. Seen, yeah, and he's brought. 
gotten it up at the gym a few times. And I know this argument. I took a poll at the gym because I was so heated. I was like asking everybody. I, I'm in the middle of it. I'm cause I believe in the like, shit. I almost wish I would have went that way because I was so Bro. fucking good at Halo. Like I said, you just brought up a rad point that I that I didn't think of last time because I kept sticking to the idea that Webster's dictionary defines an athlete as this. That's the definition. Uh fucking with that being said, you. I think I think if you were to test guys, because you just said it, you have really quick hand-eye coordination. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think high-level gamers probably have a higher processing speed and hand-eye coordination at a different level that is hard to comprehend, which is why they, they're they some people are just inherently better at video games. Why? It's probably because they have a more absolutely athletic can't. ability to do that thing, to it, process it, and move and react quicker. They have those reaction times. It's not, they have a God-given talent, dude. They've practiced, yes, and got it better and whatever, whatever, but they have a God-given talent. Yeah. And, and I know a lot of, like my boy Grant, he plays video games too a lot and it's react it work, it's reaction time because we have reaction times. Mm -hmm. So and that's why we do it. And I know throughout my college careers and stuff like that, the guys that played video games were quick fucking reaction yeah. time people. And I use that and I use that as an excuse all the time. Like this is pr training my mind. Like that's why I get to play video games all the time. Like this isn't this. I believe that. You know, like this is good for keeping my mind sharp. Do I think they're actually athletes? I don't know about that. Like, I, <laughs> like, like, like an athlete, Yo, an athlete. An, James Krause <laughs> said, if I can beat you up, then that's matter. the end of the conversation. I, yeah, I, you're I look, not an athlete. <laughs> I look at athletes as a physical, as a physical being. That's what I, I portray as an athlete. Do I, do I sometimes, and I don't like to ever think what I should have done and stuff, but I should have probably got into fucking video games because I was so fucking good at it. And I would have probably been a millionaire being a video, being a fucking professional video You're game probably player. Probably still stream. It's not you, too late. You know what yeah, I mean? bro, I'm gonna, not as good because I don't play as much anymore. You, yeah. and I should, I, I, you me and him should have a Twitch stream when we get the new uh, office. Yes. That, yeah. See, I've looked at that. I was like, God, I should get into it. Cause I, I Come only, watch us. I'll teach I only you. play two video games now and it's Madden and it's fucking, and it's Call of Duty. Because I, I don't like to switch, like, because I don't have enough time to do enough of them. So because I, they yeah. take forever to master. You got it. You got it. It can like take years to master Call of Duty. Like, one. like yeah. the loadouts, the maps, you, the fucking. You got to know where to go, and you got and you have to it's play the, it constantly. It's the flow of the game, too. Like you just said in Halo, you would know the things, and that's how I was good, too. You would know how they would come back. You would know where people would respond. Yeah. You have to Hiding know. Hiding spots. You, you would know if I run around this corner, I can get shot from here, or I can get shot from here. You have to know those shit for for me to be good at it. Yeah, like I had to know those things, and now I don't have the time to know the map to be that good. And when I start playing again, I usually put hours in a day because I gotta be fucking good at something. I can't go in and play and be like, oh, I got killed. No, I'll be fucking. I <laughs> no because there's be there's a level of <laughs> no, bro. There's a level you of know? anger when you like. Let's say they because I know there's some new maps out. When they put the new maps out and your loadout isn't built, it, you either buy it or you earn it. And earning it is fucking annoying because when you're really good at it and you're starting to build out your weapon systems and you're just getting fucking pumped, it, 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 you, you have to put one grand trying to fucking kill people yeah. with AKs. You're like, God fucking damn it. You know, like <laughs> yeah. it's not fun. And it's, it's serious. It's really, it's really hard. And Gertz, I got an I idea could see for him you. twitching too, because he's so smart and good at talking shit. Like, <laughs> yeah, I, that's fun bro. to watch, dude. I was just going <laughs> to yeah. say, you could do that as a side job. Those guys are making money. I know. Now you let the little guy out of the box while you're playing video games and just get a micro. Oh, oh, dude, shoot. I, I, I would talk shit on that. And I talk shit to the people because they get pit. And it's just like, what's I, I talk shit the whole time I play games. I talk shit everything I when I'm a game player, like all times. You know, we fucking <laughs> cornhole. Yeah, That's for how listeners, I, we had the most competitive <laughs> fucking game of cornhole you've ever seen. It but, was me and these three guys with Grant, you it was him and Grant, you and me. I was eating hot dogs. Is that Labor Day? Yeah, I don't remember. It's, yeah. it's the most competitive fucking cornhole game I've ever. We were yelling at each other for like little infractions, like your toe might touch the line, and I would just get fucking <laughs> heat. And then so we should have videotaped up. that. We should have. So it's like literally Actually, that's the only way I play fucking yeah. any games. I'm oh, not intense. joking. Yeah. Like I only. If I'm doing paper, rock, scissors, I'm here to fucking win. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I don't do, and people, like, I get shit through that. Like, my boy Gaethje will tell you because he hates playing anything against me because everything I do is fucking serious. Like, that's it. And I'm doing it to win, and I'll fucking be in your face about it, and I'm fucking trying to win every single fucking thing I do. Yeah, like, I'm the same. I like playing games. I love it. It's the only way I like to even go, if I have something to drink, I like to be playing games with my boys, and I like to compete. I'm going to play that same way. It doesn't matter fucking if we're playing checkers, if we're playing fucking bags, if we're fucking actually punching each other. That's my intensity when I play a fucking game. That's yeah, how same. I am too. When I grew up, 
<clears throat> I used to play games all the time growing up, my brother and I. And I was like the biggest piece of shit. Like I'm surprised my brother still talks to me. Because I'm older. <laughs> and like he's the gamer now, but I would kick the shit out of him and stuff. And if he was ever going to beat me, I would stand up, turn the thing off, and walk out before it ended. I'd be like, the game didn't end. You didn't fucking win. Yeah, fuck you. Would, you lose. <laughs> dude, do you something could, about it. <laughs> you could ask my mom. I would throw controllers at the TV oh, and shit. And she'd be like, what is wrong with you? I would stand up. Yeah, through so many I would kick bedroom doors and stuff. Yeah. Uh, holes, oh, all over, holes all over my apartment. I have one funny story of when I lost the game of Madden. <laughs> and I like, I chuck my fucking stool, chuck my chair, kick my door. And I go down and there's a fucking squash. Like I live in a you know, like a house with like other roommates and like one of them, the girl that owned the house like lived there. And I walked down there, there was Poor like girl. this big squash. I grabbed the fucking squash, I headbutt the fucking squash and it, fucking <laughs> splits, and it splits in half. And then after my rage is down, like I'm like picking up the pieces, I put the squash, got it back together. The next, like, like that, that, that after dude, the girl comes back, she's like, what happened to my squash? <laughs> we're just I like, <laughs> and we're just like, I'm just like, I'm just got like, seeds uh, on his forehead. I was like, I, I don't know, I don't know. Oh. Weird. <laughs> Headbutt. That's awesome. We need to get you a Twitch channel. All right, real quick, I want to tell you about Fit Soda. Listen, we are addicted to this stuff in our house, and that is not a lie. Everyone loves a nice fizzy drink. Everyone loves a bit of soda. But if you look at people that drink a lot of soda, you're going to see that, unfortunately, they're probably obese. A lot of people that have a lot of health problems and weight problems, they're drinking a lot of soda. A lot of people with messed up teeth, they're drinking a lot of soda. If you want that soda fixed, but you don't want to get fat, you don't want to rot your teeth, and you don't want to mess up your body, this is where Fit Soda comes in. First of all, it's absolutely delicious, okay? They've got a variety of flavors. Flavors. The citrus one is my favorite, but this one here, the black cherry cola, they got the orange cream, root beer float, the sparkling citrus, as I say, that is my personal favorite. Listen, there's zero calories, zero, zero calories in this. Branch chain amino acids are involved for recovery and electrolytes for hydration. It tastes incredible. It is guilt-free soda drinking. And listen, I'm just telling you now, little uh, life hack. If you throw a little bit of vodka in there as well, the perfect mixer for your alcoholic beverage with no calories, depending on what you put in it, of course. But listen, I'm telling you right now, we love this stuff in our house. We are going through it by the bucket load. You will not be disappointed with this product. The flavor is second to none. It is guilt-free soda drinking. the zero calories and it's good for you. The branch chain amino acids, the electrolytes for hydration. And of course, as I said, zero calories. So back in up you're you're you beat out the senior your your college was hard that first year a lot going on and then coming into your sophomore year you kind of hit a stride yeah yeah i'd say so i mean like i was still kind of learning wrestling you know like i just went out there and was physical and stuff like that but at that time it was like yeah there was high school and that you kind of learn but i didn't really start learning until college you know and that's like you got really you got your own coach you got stuff like that and you're actually learning technique before that it was just like brute force you know yeah, like yeah. just like my my college court or my college coach would say brandon's like that fucking little baby thing where you put the triangle in the fucking and it drops through and he's the one that takes the square and fucking pounds it in there you know yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. that's I'm how make he, it fit. that i'm gonna make it fit and that, your hammer nail you all know, the time. Yeah. Ex exactly so it was that that's how my college went and <laughs> you know and i've always had kind of like i said i've had this internal battle in my mind so i i don't feel like i've ever really like made especially in wrestling i never really made my stride because i always had this internal battle you know it was like be this person don't be this person be this person don't be this person like don't don't let the fucking crazy out the box and that was like because i had to learn that when i was in fucking junior high high school to just keep the crazy in the box because otherwise i was like i said i lived in the detention center i i ate fucking lunch with the principal like i literally <laughs> yeah. would that's what my life was about and it was always so i always had this internal battle wait like, that's interesting bro so because as a high achiever you're right we were talking about brandon's land before this about this kind of parallel between sowing seeds and growing a farm or, 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 or land is very similar to being an entrepreneur where you can do a ton of work, not see any fruit. And you're such a high achiever when you don't see the result, you can tend to get depressed. I know I, there's mm -hmm. a lot of times in this business where I'd get, I'm such a high achiever. I'd get depressed because I couldn't see results, you know, right mm -hmm. away. And I, I would even imagine this is why certain athletes, you don't see the roots growing under the ground. Yeah. Why, why they really suffer when they're done with the sport because you're kind of starting over. You're kind of starting a new thing. And as high achievers, yeah, if you're not seeing immediate results, I'm bringing it up because it's an interesting like life principle, I think, that if you are like Brandon and I or anybody in this room who's very driven, 
there, there has to be, because you don't want to box up the genius that you are, right? Or the rage or whatever it is that you're trying to push down. Cause I think it gets pushed down on everybody as you're growing up, but there's that other side too, right? Of like, I do need to learn how to temper this some and, so I don't go fucking crazy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You got to be I know a contributing me, member of society. <laughs> well, no, I mean, like, <laughs> the way he was saying it, 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 like, spoke to me because there's definitely times in Coyos where as we were building this where I thought I was going fucking nuts. Uh-huh. And I didn't know how to channel some of it. So it, it, it manifested in depression. And I was, you know, drinking a lot, just trying to figure out how to quiet that thing in me that was like, mm-hmm. you need to be dominating all the time. And as you're growing a company, you can't. It's just a, it's a, it's a narrow lane you kind of have yeah. to chip away at. Yep, yep. You you and, it's, it, and it's isolated. There is no fanfare. There is no fucking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the roots are important because you force the top. It, there's nothing for it to hold up. Connect like, to, yeah. yeah. I think that, yeah, a lot of high performing people, a lot of athletes have to try to push like a certain thing down. Like I got into fighting kind of by accident but man i grew up fighting all the time i literally i used to go downtown as like a senior and wait for the bars to let out and just look to fight like grown men that like were fucked up and wanted to fight Mm -hmm. we used to give the ultimatum in college (laughs) the ultimatum is the best test in the world what's that called called the test of manhood an ultimatum was like you're about to get one yeah you you, a guy at a bar gets a little little testy and you'd be like look you're gonna you have two choices you can either Get down on the ground and lick the bottom of my shoe, <laughs> <laughs> or we're gonna fight. And How the, many people ladder, did that? Oh, dude, eighty percent. We got down and yeah. oh my god, push comes to shove. And so, being a two hundred and eighty pound rugby mm-hmm. player, we always ran with the football team, rugby guys. So it was like a we weighed a, we weighed a metric ton as a crew. Like yeah. I'd be like I'm stabbing but one like, of you though. No, but I mean like most guys in call, most most people don't want to fight. You push comes to shove, you give them that out, they'll take yeah, it. Yeah. And it was more demoralizing than actually beating a guy up to watch him like crawl across the bar with a cookie up his butt. <laughs> and what I would find crazy a lot of time, like in college, <laughs> I had two buddies and they were the biggest people I've ever seen. One, they're both on steroids, bucking back in college when I Guilty. didn't really know what steroids were. But they were like, Guilty. they looked, they looked like the bodybuilder type, but they yeah. were also rest, like they were f- they were monsters and we'd go out and it was crazy how many people would kind of like chip at first, you know, like people would fuck with us because they want to try to fight the biggest people. That happened a lot to me in college. You know what I mean? A lot of the fights I got in were me walking in and someone talking shit and I'd be like, dude, they they would it would be crazy how many would start and it would be nuts and but I'd be the one to fight them a lot of times like they would just sit back and it was just but it was <laughs> fucking crazy how many people wanted to show how big they were and how tough they were but then how quick it would go Brandon, uh, Brandon wait, this is a, this is an interesting philosophy that I just popped into the old noggin here uh, do you think there's a lot of depression and shit now because I have this theory that I think most men should be not force but as kids. I think we should steer them into jujitsu and fighting in a professional setting because I think men are designed to battle. It's just part of our DNA. It is in there deep to, we used to be, it's fake now. No, but no, but like the depression we face nowadays is because we aren't conquering something. We aren't, uh, I read this book once that it said every man needs a battle to fight and a woman to save at our core. That's what we need or else we feel empty and gross and fucked up, which is why today because we don't really have those anymore. We see more depression. You see, you know, more mass shootings, those kind of things, because we don't have a battle anymore. Well, because, yeah, we're, society is forcing everybody to push it down now. Like the school shootings and stuff, I've said that for a long time. Now you get like an assault ticket from the police if you get in a fight in school and stuff, where as before, like me growing up, like kids would get in fights or I would get in fights, and then it would just be done. Now yeah. these kids like bottle it up, bottle it up, can't do anything, right? come back, shoot up the place. Exactly. And is any of those people you say shooting, are they athletes? No. I don't think any single one of them because they have no outlet. Yeah. I don't think they, they have zero outlet That's a good point. to give your aggression out. Like, have I've you ever seen one of that. them being like, oh, yeah, he's on the football team? No. None of them fucking were in an e-sport. I do look at sports, and now <laughs> and now we like we, we downgrade sports. Like, people, oh, funny, you're the draw. Oh, fucking. But sports have always been big because before, like you said, we battled. And now you go out on a bat, and now you go out on a sport, and you battle. That's a battle. The sports about yeah. you're getting some of that out. You you're getting you're getting W's. You're doing whatever, but you're going out there and you're kind of battling. Maybe you're not fucking punching each other like we fucking decided to go with the most savage battle. But fucking, you're going out there and you're battling. Well, you're now competing. we're competing, and, and you're learning to take to shit. Compete, you're, you're learning, learning to take, to take shit. shit. You're learning to give shit back to people. 
you get like it like hardens you as a person, even like it, mentally. It, it helps you. It does help you because I agree with you. We have to do battle. You have men are made to do that, and sports kind of provide that in a way that's less fucking punching you in the fucking face. You know, yeah. like there's a little less. Like it gives you that little bit of an outlet. But nowadays, sports are getting a little less because fucking the way we are in this world right now. So they keep trying to attack it too. Like I was making a joke the other night with football. Pretty soon it's going to be two hand touch. Like yeah. when Tua went down. When Tua went down, I was like, there was all this, there was all this fucking chatter about the cut the team and did they follow protocol and all this bullshit. And I was like, look, that guy knows what the fuck he signed up for. He told you he was good. And even coming into the week with practice, do you, do you remember this story? Yeah. Then he got, he got suplexed the next game and his fingers went all crazy and he got, he had, it looked like he was having a seizure. It was pretty brutal. He but was knocked out. Yeah. He was knocked stiff. out. Yeah. But then there was all this, there was all this, someone wanted someone to blame, which I get, that's the world we live in. The world we live in. But I was like, this guy's a fucking warrior. He's been a warrior. He told you he was good. My point of that rant is that they're even trying to make it softer all the fucking time. I don't know. I disagree with that though. So like, which part? Kind of all of it, right? So I think that they well, the, should. Tua, you don't that think was, the world's that, going that softer? You no, don't no, think no, the world's no. going Tua got softer? Hurt. That was a fact. <laughs> Tua got hurt. The, the NFL, these teams hired the best doctors around, right? It's their job to be responsible for your brain and stuff. We as athletes, like we've talked about this before. I don't know your opinion, but um, I say when there's a foul, like somebody gets kneed in the face on the ground in the UFC or whatever, like Aljamain Sterling, it shouldn't be up to the fighter. It shouldn't, they, they shouldn't be like, are you good? Do you want to go? Because everybody, most fighters are going to be like, oh, I'm good. They so might you, not so even so know. So you disagree what, with the portion that I said that the, the doctor cleared him? Um, You're no, saying I mean, they should have protected if him. If the more. doctor cleared him, then the doctor cleared him. Yeah, they did. Um, yeah. It shouldn't be up to him, though. Like, I'm good. I know what I'm so, doing because so, athletes. But they do this in fights all the time. Right where they're like you good and the guy's like I'm fucking good. Let yeah. me go. But I don't think that that should in, be a thing because some guys are not good. So hmm. I slightly but don't agree with you because I feel like as a man coming at me as a man I don't believe another man needs to save me and if I decide that it's okay I'm making a decision as a fucking man that I'm okay Mm. and I will deal with and I'll deal with the fucking consequences I don't need any other man in this world to fucking save me it's how I look at life like I'll do what the fuck I want to do like Uh, and, 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 and yes I get and they're like they're well they're there to save the athletes from themselves yeah sure I don't fucking care, but I know what I signed up for. I don't need anyone saving me. Yeah. And yeah. that's what I look at. I I go back to like when I got cut in the forehead and this and that, and they stopped it. And it was like one of those things where I was like, I'm fucking fine. Yeah, that's and, true. And, I had one and, stop and like I that. will don't fucking stop this. If I fucking want to stop, then I will. If I die out here, let me fucking die. If mm. I'm choosing this, I'm a man making a man choice. I'm not fucking four years old. I am making a decision. Yes, I'll tell my four-year-old what the fuck to do and to stop if he's got a big cut and he wants to keep going. But I'm a goddamn man. I'm fucking let me make my decisions. I know the consequences. Tula, I'll take that. Tula fucking decided he wanted to go out there and be a fucking man. He wasn't going for the Super Bowl. Maybe he should have been smarter. Maybe fucking whatever. But he's a goddamn man. He's a fucking warrior. He could make his own decisions if he could keep playing or not. And I'm not going to be like, oh, they should have done this. Oh, they should have done that. I need no Superman to come in and save me. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm... I agree with you on that, like cuts and everything like that. I think that sometimes when you have a concussion, though, like how many times have you seen people concussed at the gym and they're talking and everything, but they're kind of on autopilot. They Mm -hmm. actually don't even know what they're saying, answering to. Your brain is not fully firing. Like if you saw, I don't really want to put this out there, but like Grant's one of your best friends. Yeah. And you saw Grant concussed as fuck and he's like, no, I'm good. But you could see in his eyes, you're like, he doesn't even know where he is. Yeah. You would want to be like, nah, man, just like, just chill. Yeah. Maybe not in a competition, but like at practice, you would do that, right? Oh, like, dude, absolutely. sit down. Absolutely. Take because a seat. But that's why you have good people around you. You know yeah. what I mean? And that's the thing about in life. You're supposed to have good people around us. Not a lot of people have good people around you. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing. If if I told Grant to sit down, he'd sit down because he knows that I'm here for him. Yeah. Oh, trust wait, you. hold you know on. That's, I mean? a, that's a part of the story that makes it is, is if it's him... Like if, if I was out doing something and you told me to fucking chill, I would chill because I love and respect you. Same with you. If it's a doctor or someone else, you never that, met. That's the important part of the story. Yeah, that okay. I've never met. If it's if 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 Brandon or you were cornering me ever, and you guys were like, "Dude, we're," I'd be like, "All right," I'd probably listen to that. Mm-hmm. I'd also, you know, Anthony said on this podcast, Lionheart. I also just want my corner to know that I have my back. So if I say I'm going back out there, they're like, "All right, I got your back," because mm-hmm. we had this talk with him too. Um, I think that part of the story changes that argument, sort of. Yeah. 
But I mean, I mean, if yeah. two as teammates were like, dude, I yeah, bet he would have listened. Someone you respect and know, like you said, I was, I was kind of going I'll with you, you on that, that yeah. like concussion. You don't know, but that's why you have good people around you. Like when I go out and fight, if I'm fucking doing something when I was out and being in ridiculous and I'm fighting and my good friends like, bro, let's stop. Let, da, da, da. I'll be like, all right. But if some random person told me to stop, you think I'm going to fucking listen to that person? I'm with you on that no. actually. Cause I, yeah, I don't listen to random people too much. I got to like respect you to take your advice. Exactly. I'm with you. Okay. And that's why you have good people. That's why in life you need good people around you to, yeah. to, to, to heal their advice and listen to them and know that you're around me for my fucking for my well-being, not for anything other than that. And that's where I think the world, too, we're getting away from having good people around us. We just have yes men. We just had this. We have that and this. Now, a lot of people have good people around me. Like, I got good people around me. I listen to them. So I got a select few people around me, and I trust and I believe in what they say. And like you said, if I fucking got fucked up and Grant was like, dude, or you were like, dude, you got to chill, I would listen to you, you know, because yeah. I know you're not just fucking here and not knowing me. You know me. Yeah. You know, and you know that I will fucking give my life for this and that, that or whatever the fuck I do, I'll give my life for. And you, you're like, oh, bro, but it's this. I'll, they I'll save listen. you from yourself. Save you from mm, yourself. But yeah. it can only be somebody I 100% trust. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you, you on that. You know, if some dope. random guy tells me that, I'm like, you know nah, me, fuck go fuck yourself. You, know you don't me, know me. You know me, <laughs> doctors that, you know, right in the beginning of wrestling I, at, in 10th grade, I was told to stop wrestling because of a back thing and that soon you, shit, you might not be able to walk. If I listened to that person, my life would have been a whole different thing. You know, if I would listen to some shit, every time i get hurt you know me doctors have told me not to fucking fight anymore oh fucking this or go back there get oh i can't believe you fucking do oh this isn't good for you duh, duh, duh. it's like how you know, many times i've heard that throughout my life to stop doing shit that fucking i love to do yeah. if i listen to those motherfuckers that i don't trust i would be like oh you're all right sir because you have a phd and fucking went to school and studied and never did a sport that's Nerd. true yeah i've had doctors even <laughs> i wasn't hurt just getting like medicals done and they're like you know, fighting's bad for you, blah, 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 trying to preach. I'm like, shut the fuck up and take my blood pressure. Here's over. Sign the paper. Smoking darts in the, yeah. fucking, yeah, in the right? fucking parking lot. Right? I'm like, you know, being so fat is bad for you, too? <laughs> right? Oh, yeah? Well, you're ugly. Yeah. <laughs> so do you guys think there's going to be a reversion to the mean? Meaning, like, I feel like this sort of woke culture bubble is going to pop. And I feel like there's going to be a reversion back to, to, to manhood. And I think you're sort of seeing it across the world. It's like kind of like... I don't want to get political, but when Biden came into power, Russia was like, fuck it. There's no <laughs> one, do there's no one who's going to stand in the gap. Yeah. There's no man who's going to stand in the gap and deal with this. So we're going to go in. <laughs> Biden's like, I got two words for you. Made in America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you I got that? two words no. for you. Strategic. Yeah, I, fucking, I, oh my I, God. I literally know nothing. I never even thought about the Biden thing. Like, cause I pay attention to none of that. Yeah. Like, I'll be, I'm a, literally people like, I know nothing. I don't watch news. I don't read shit. I know nothing. I never thought, I know there's a war in Russia doing yeah, shit. Yeah. I never thought about what you just said makes sense. Like about Biden. Okay. Now we'll do it. Nobody's here to stand No one's going to do shit. The weakness. Um, yeah, that makes sense. No one's here to do Yo, shit. So, so I've said this before. I want you to hear it. I heard Jordan Peterson once say the coolest thing. Um, he said, the world needs violent men who know how to temper that violence and do good. Meaning he was basically saying, we need alphas who are alpha, who know they're alpha, but can control that alpha or the world falls apart. Fact. Mm -hmm. And we are moving away from like Give even saying the word Give alpha. Chills yeah, right bro. There. It's got chills go. You need men to stand in, it's giving me chills. You need men to stand in the gap. You need, you know, back in the Bible it was like the sheep herder who was on watch all the time. You need sheep dogs. And mm -hmm. the world sort of attacking this idea of of that. And it's it's kind of creepy. I think there's gonna be a bubble. I think it's gonna be like the stock market. I think you'll go through this woke thing, it'll fall apart, it won't work. Um I think there's going to be a bubble and a reversion back to like we understand manliness. It needs well, to because this whole that doesn't thing, mean like hitting. Women. I think people take no. that to like oh uh, you so you're a, you're a for hitting a women. You're like no, <laughs> but like a man, a real man would never. I want to be a, a hero. Woman. I want to someone, protect people. Someone stronger than another person would never beat up someone weaker. Like when I would fight all the fucking time, I went to the biggest people. Everybody, yeah. I yeah, never yeah. fought the fucking little weak guy. Like, yeah, would I push the guy down because if he was doing something to me yeah i Yo. didn't just let him smack me in the fucking back like a real man would never attack anybody weaker than them like, did you ever hear that it. quote in yellowstone when he goes we don't fight uh we don't kill people we kill wolves yeah yes that was the best show i've seen in years yeah in yeah decades. amazing and why in do you think decades. there's been such a big reaction decades, to it man. in the world because we miss it well, no, people, yeah. Why do you think there's like a father complex with everyone too? We want protection. We want to feel 
protected and that we're a part of a pack and that that pack is strong and yeah we are going to kill other wolves who try to attack our pack mm -hmm. yeah going it's, back to what it's you in our dna going back to what you said about that bubble though it's got to burst right because in america this whole woke like woke culture Wait, and thing, let's be clear chris we're not saying sorry we're not saying either that we're not about woke ideas like uh, the, the, no one's saying that i think that's the I attack am. on it no no i'm just saying like uh, what, what's no, what's what, like woke ideas start as these sort of grandiose like, concepts. Like, like there's 37 genders and uh, yeah. <laughs> like, like personally, personally, I don't care what you want to call yourself. Like, that's what I mean by like, I'm open to the idea. If you want to get a sex change after you're 18 or 21 and that's your thing, I don't fucking care. I don't care either. Just don't put it on me to know and like keep up with all these and names. Don't put and it stuff. on me to care. Yeah. Don't um, put it on me to care. But what I was going to say trying is, to evangelize me. Yeah. What I was going to say is this like the culture now, it's only in America for the most part. It's getting weaker and weaker and weaker. And these other countries like Russia, China and stuff are getting harder and harder and harder. So if it doesn't burst, it's going to be bad for us in the future. Because, yeah. like, who the fuck's going to stop them from just coming in and slapping you I mean, around? China's already starting to take over. I mean, they own most of Africa now. They're moving into South America. They're, those guys don't give a shit. Yeah. I mean, everything's been made here. Who knows what it's got in it? No, like, so, like, a woke, <laughs> like a woke idea would be, like, um, should we have a universal income? Uh, should, we, should we protect, you know, the Bible talks about protecting widows. Uh, should we protect people in our society who have less fortune? Yeah. So that's a fiscally sort of liberal concept. If done well, I believe it. Yes, yeah. we should protect people. Yes, I tithe at my church so that the mother who has four kids who whose house burned down and her husband died mm -hmm. should receive some aid from me as a community member. Mm -hmm. Those mm -hmm. are things I believe yeah. in. I'm but I still believe that. on the other side of like, there needs to be alpha men to protect the gate. Do you know why? I think the idea of wokeism in America is only a thing because your your gate is so protected that's what makes this country great is that there was a bunch of alphas standing at the fence going you can do whatever you fucking want yeah do you know what i mean the only reason we can be woke is because there's a bunch of fucking tough people yeah protecting it <laughs> and gave you that right yeah it's kind of a weird irony right like no it's true mm -hmm. it's fucking true speaking of alphas or you want to do a Stephen A. We Smith had some clip? Stephen A. Smith <laughs> clips. Here. I can't stand this guy. Oh, me either. Uh, For those of you that don't know, Stephen A. Smith, the uh, ESPN. So, Gertz, give us a breakdown on this dude's technique. <laughs> <laughs> There's going to be no technique. Oh, yeah. Great. This, <laughs> this guy shits on fighters all the time, too. Boom. I want to know what the pad holder's doing, too. Yeah, that, that, he's doing terrible there. He's letting it happen. What he's holding for the uppercut would be the punch that would kill Stephen A. Stephen A is just punching kids and women. Look, boom, boom. boom. Yeah, look, he looks kid. so, kid. he's so uncomfortable. What, he, what are you punching down here? He's like, kid, like mom, kid, said. mom. That's exactly, what, that's exactly what is he punching Danny DeVito. Down there? Oh my gosh. We got some other ones. In. I think one of the worst things is, is so UFC got him out, right? Like he's not commentating anymore. I don't know. Every once in a while he pops up in there. It's this horrible. One, Rogan's face in this just kills me. Desperate. And that's why he fought so so intensely tonight. This and is tough for me because here I, I'm talking I'm about McGregor next to a legend, okay? And far be it for me to refute anything that Joe Rogan says, but here's my reality. We haven't learned a damn thing about Conor McGregor based off of this fight. Really? Because who were you? Listen, the man did not get hit other than one kick to the arm. That's it? I mean, he didn't. Listen, look, I have gotten hit that much in the last week. Okay? And I don't fight. I mean, come on, y'all. The fact of the matter is we don't know. And we know that Conor McGregor is a champion. We yeah. know he's a great fighter. We Look know that Rogan. he's box office. He's phenomenal for the sport. We're all happy he won. If he's you entertaining. Sport, you got to be happy he's that good with Conor words. McGregor won. But you didn't learn anything from tonight's fight because Cowboy Rogan's Cerrone just, just didn't show up. I could have ran for 40 seconds. I disagree. We learn. We learn he <laughs> rises to the occasion. We learn he can put Cowboy away. We learn that he can land okay, a head fair. kick. That's we fair. learn that he can beat him yeah. down. Okay. We, we learn that this guy performs when the lights So this is when McGregor beat Cerrone? Yeah. But he's like, I could have ran for 45 seconds. No, you wouldn't have. You would have died think he could. for 45 <laughs> seconds. I don't think he could stay away from Gertz for 45 seconds no. in the octagon. No, I, and the, so this is how I don't like Stephen A. Smith, too, but I think the world in sports made him the heel 
like he made himself the heel, but I think he's doing it. He's he's doing it because we every the world that we're in this drama fucking weird fucking world controversy where pays. controversy pays. And look at how big this fucking guy is. He's that guy. And who knows? Maybe this guy, maybe his fucking family actually loves him, and he's actually a cool fucking guy, and he's fucking doing the that's goddamn just, Kobe Cummington. Maybe yeah, he's yeah. doing the Kobe Cummington crap. I don't fucking know, but it's he's made money off of it. Like, wait, this explain guy that. Made, so, Col you think Kobe's his whole persona is just a fucking? That's, oh, that's a WWE. Oh yeah, character. yeah, yeah. I've I never know, met him, but I've heard he's I, like a super nice. Dude. Yeah, and I've heard, and I know people that went to college with him in wrestling and stuff, and he wasn't exactly like that. You know what I mean? And these are that's for sure a persona, and you put it and you go down that route. Now you're fucking down that route. You know, I, I look at Stephen A. Smith. I don't fucking like him, but I think he's playing. Uh, an, a, a, a fucking character the heel you know that and just yeah. like you know wwe does that right they have fucking people that are the heel no one likes them but they're fucking making millions of dollars being that fucking character that's what Stephen a smith is doing i'm he's an idiot i i agree but i think he's playing the idiot uh. and he does that shit because he's fucking he he i don't know many casters i know who Stephen a smith is good point and i don't yeah, fucking point. know i don't fucking we're know. talking about him i were talking about him and i couldn't give you i trying to think other names they're not coming to my what head about Ch is chael is that a character he's playing yeah i know chael and chael's, know a, well. and chael's a nice guy but he does it smooth enough where he's the heel and he also you like him because he says smart things he's a smart man and he is the heel but not a lot of people like hate chael you yeah, know what yeah. i mean like not anymore he, they used they, to. they're Really though, like the stuff I, I like would say when he was saying shit to Tito, the stuff he would say was funny, and he was the Connor before the Connor. Like uh, he yeah. fucking would talk stuff, and yeah, you would be like, "Oh, what the hell!" But some of the shit he would say was funny, yeah. and you wouldn't, you didn't like not like him, and he was doing this like act. I think he just had good slick lines that he probably wrote. Prior. Yeah, he's sharp. Oh, no, you he know, does. and he would say, and he would have it, and he would have good slick lines. I lived with Chill. Yeah, he, uh, did you? Yeah, he. Uh, <laughs> He watches YouTube videos and stuff all day. Like he writes it out. I mean, I'm, I'm giving away his secret. I yeah. think it's out now anyway. No, but I think he's, he's like the it. nicest person ever. Yeah. Like his mom would go to practice with him every day, um, and like bring him. He's water like Wonder Boy, but he just figured out how to like. Oh, dude, just the most shit. polite person remembers every person's name. If you walk up to him, meet him, tell him your name, he remembers it. He's a like, pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, he's a pro. pro. He's he's, he's a like pro. the most polite person ever. Yeah, yeah. Doesn't really swear. It was all like, but then he, he doesn't just, drink and stuff, right? No, no. Then he would just flip a switch and go on stage, and it was just like, it made him big, you yeah. know. And then he he played that, and that that's where I look at the Stephen A. Smith. Not to say he's not that; he might be a little idiotic, and especially when he gets in the fighting and talks about that shit, like stick to basketball or whatever right. his fucking right. main thing yeah. is. But he's he's playing, he's doing that, and he's doing well with it because people like drama. It's like I always say, I don't watch any fucking reality TV because it's a bunch of shit. You know, because it's drama filled freaking, you know, like if it's gone past one season, now they're implementing fucking stuff to make it more drama. You yeah. know what I mean? And that's what the world is now, though. Like we like it. It's like, and that's what most TV is, is freaking reality drama crap. It's, it's like, politics. It's, it's all it is, you know, it's uh, fucking just, it's scary. Like you said, there's probably a this. bubble. There's a bubble coming. Well, Brandon Gertz, uh, we will be there ringside for your fight. I know you're going to murk this guy. Can't wait to see you fucking destroy the librarian. I can't believe I got his fucking name right. Was, <laughs> I, awesome. can't I, I, can't, I can't believe you guessed uh, that. I can't believe you guessed that. Chris, you too, buddy. Yeah, uh, we're going to get it. Week. Yeah, can't wait to hang oh, yeah. out with you guys after um, after we win. Um, Brandon Gertz. And then, yeah, again, Maddie will put links for ticket sales. Yes. And we'll get In some the bio. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'll shoot it to you. All right, oh. boys. That's a podcast. <laughs> Vaughn into the windup in his first offering. Just a bit outside. This is a fit